Do you feel like you aren't making enough progress toward your dreams? Do you constantly worry about what other people think about you? Do you feel pressure to follow a defined path or maybe a lack of confidence, motivation, or focus? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then I have one thing to say to you, me too. And I believe that the first step to fixing a problem is admitting that there is one. Today, I wanna to talk about how we can start taking steps to address these problems and pressures. And most of all, I wanna help with this question. Do you feel like you don't have a clear purpose in life or don't know why you're here? Today, I wanna to share three things with you. First of all, my story and how I got to the point of asking myself these questions. Second, why am I taking action now to address these problems? And third, I wanna share a call to action that will help you to take that first step. So to introduce myself, my name is Thomas Armstrong, grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina, lucky enough to have an incredibly supportive family. There was a lot of entrepreneurship in my family. My dad had a company selling small airplanes. My stepmom has a meeting planning business. My mom actually runs a petting zoo out in Wake Forest, which is always fun. And so the dining room table questions, they weren't usually like, oh, how was school today? It was, how's that new idea you're working on? And everyone was just always so willing to help each other out. It really impacted my mindset from a young age. It reminded me to always be looking for opportunities to help other people and to take responsibility for your future and to know that anything is possible if you put in the work. So it was kind of natural that I would start something too. I started actually making videos helping people figure out how to solve Rubik's Cubes when I was like 11 or 12 years old. I had my very high pitched voice it's very embarrassing if you find them online, but it was great to hear the comments from people, people that I was able to help figure out how to do something they had always wanted to do. It was a really great experience. In middle school, I worked with my middle school business partner to create some apps for the iPhone app store. That was a ton of fun. I learned a lot from it. I actually ended up starting a web hosting company with that same friend. And we were working with a larger team of people, all just like remote through Skype and instant messaging, some people in Britain. And it was kind of my first exposure to leading a team. I was 15 or 16 at the time, and I basically ran it into the ground. I had no idea how to run a team or to communicate or to inspire people when I was like 16 years old, but it was a great learning experience and I got a lot out of it. In high school, my brother Ben started getting into photography and video production, so I took his equipment back and forth to school, rolling it down the sidewalk every single day. And making videos kind of became my way of helping other people, oftentimes helping them to share their story or share the story of their organization. And so I actually helped a lot of people in high school with videos and photography for different clubs and organizations. I also had an opportunity to help my sister make a video to apply for a special needs program at App State University. During high school, I also started dating my girlfriend, Emma, and we just recently celebrated four years together. Then of course, the end of high school comes and every single person starts asking that age old question, the one that we all dread, what do you want to do? What made the most sense for me was to pursue business because what I saw business as was as a way for me to impact other people in a positive way. I wanted to go to college somewhere that I could actually have an impact on the program and not just be a recipient, but also give back to it in some way. So I went to NC State and I got really involved with the business school and the entrepreneurship programs. I met some incredible people, people who are so passionate about having a positive impact. It's been such a great experience. I had the amazing opportunity to study abroad for entrepreneurship in Australia. And actually right after the program, my friends Michael and Nick and I decided to take a trip through New Zealand. While we were there, I helped my friend Michael make a video about his life story. We shared it out on YouTube and on Facebook and it had a fantastic response. It was really my first experience getting to create something and sharing it out with the world and people I didn't even know were reacting to it and having this emotional connection to it. And it was impacting people's lives. It was really cool to see. It was clear to me that sharing his story in this authentic, honest way was a fantastic way to impact other people. And so at this point, back in Raleigh, I was helping my brother grow a digital marketing agency called Nine Miles Media. We started out just making videos for other companies but over the last few years, we've been transitioning to doing full digital marketing campaigns and working with incredible clients. We moved into offices in downtown Raleigh and have expanded four times since then, going just from two people now up to 13 people today. 
Things were growing quickly and everything was looking up, but there was a problem. I had a feeling I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. I felt like I had no direction. All the material things or the image of success, none of that really meant anything because I didn't have a reason why I was doing any of it. I needed to find my purpose. So I bought a bunch of books, I started listening to podcasts, trying to figure out how other people have found their purpose. Looking back at all of my experiences, I realized I've always been a helper. I've always been the person where I want everyone around me to succeed. Whether I was helping people solve a Rubik's Cube, helping my brother start a company, or helping Michael to share his story. This is what gave me energy and got me through the day, if I could help someone around me. So I created my mission statement, to empower people to dream big, take action, and achieve fulfillment through their maximum potential. As soon as I had this, it lit a fire in me. I'm not kidding, like it really did. Suddenly I had a reason, a reason for everything I was doing. The first thing I did was set a goal to meet a hundred people. I knew there was no way I could meet that many people without having my perspective fundamentally changed. The meetings were incredible. Oh my gosh. I realized I get so much energy from those conversations where I'm able to help people to get past roadblocks or to think bigger about their own potential in life. And I learned so much from people who shared their life stories and their why with me. I talked to people who are facing huge challenges in life, like my other brother, Alex, who's currently homeless, and friends at NC State who felt pressure to follow a path they weren't really passionate about. I realized that so many other people struggle with a similar problem, figuring out their purpose or their why. And I decided I was gonna do something about it. I reached out on social media, shared my mission and asked if anybody would be interested in helping. And I was so surprised. I was flooded with people who wanted to help or lend support in some way. And it was so special to me to see how much people cared about the mission. I ended up finding my friend Natasha, who is an entrepreneur and a talented graphic designer here at State. She agreed to come on and help put this thing together, whatever it was gonna look like. I knew from my entrepreneurship classes that it's important to always start with the problem first rather than starting with the solution. So I made a big list of all the problems I felt like I was facing. And then we went out and did interviews. I really wanted to hear from other people our age about the problems they were going through. We got the list and compared it to the one I had originally made about the problems I felt like I was facing. And I got really excited because I realized that so many of these lined up with what I was struggling with personally. So why am I starting Share Your Why? There were two problems on that list that really stuck out to me as areas where I could try and make an impact. The first area, let me ask you a question. What immediately pops into your mind when you hear the word learning? Probably books, school, things like that. And honestly, the same things would have run through my mind before, but after meeting 100 people, I realized that learning is collaborative. When you meet and talk to people and learn from their stories, it's so much more impactful than learning from books or from classes or through individual efforts. And the second reason for wanting to start something like this is that if everyone's facing a lot of the same problems, there's no sense in going through it alone. You know, most people would probably go off and do their thing and then come back and write a book about it five or 10 years later. But I wanna kinda turn this on its head. I wanna show people that if you want to inspire other people to take action, the best way is by taking action yourself and sharing your story out live and in the moment. I wanna share the daily steps I'm taking to address these problems and to achieve my mission in the hopes that it will impact other people in a positive way. But even if no one watches, if nobody engages with it, it'll still be this incredible journey of personal development for me, of becoming a better communicator, a better helper, but don't get me wrong, I intend to do something big and I won't stop until I've been able to impact other people in a positive way. So what is this thing going to look like? Well, there's three parts to it. The first is a podcast. I'm gonna try and do one every single week. And this will keep me accountable to reaching out to some incredible people to have conversations about topics that will challenge me and hopefully everyone that's listening too. My role in these conversations is as a listener and a learner. I really want to learn from these people I'm going to talk to, and really the camera is kind of a fly on the wall. This will keep me accountable to reaching out to some incredible people who have expertise that I can use to try and solve some of these problems that I have in my own life. 
by having conversations about topics that will really challenge me and hopefully everyone listening too. Really on the podcast, my role is as a listener and a learner. I want to bring as much energy as possible and I want to have a call to action in every single one, something that I can implement in my life and hopefully you can too. All right. The second part is a series of videos or a vlog. I'm not a huge fan of the word vlog, but we're going to roll with it. These are probably going to come out every two weeks. And really the purpose of these is for me to share my story, share those daily steps that I'm taking as I'm trying to achieve this mission and solve some of these problems. And honestly, even though I love making high quality videos and films, everything's just going to be on my phone and on like Zoom recordings because after COVID-19, people don't care about the quality that much and the content is really what's important here. And finally, the third part of Share Your Why, I really want to connect with you. I want to connect with you in a real way, more than just through social media comments. I'm literally going to put a phone number at the end of every video where you can just text me and I'll text you back. And I want to directly engage and find out like what are the top challenges you're facing so that I can make content that helps you. Let me be clear. I do not have it all figured out. There is so much left to learn. This is an idea that I've been working on for almost a year now. It's going to be really easy for me to, you know, just share the good stuff and make it all, you know, all fun and all smiles all the time. But I'm going to try my best to be really vulnerable and be transparent as I'm on this journey. And I want you to hold me accountable to that. Not just the good stuff, but also the tough stuff, the challenges, the mistakes as well. What I'm committing to is sharing the daily steps I take towards achieving this purpose of empowering other people and the steps I take towards not worrying about what other people think, not boxing myself in to follow a certain path and feeling more confident, motivated, and focused. I'll also be asking every person I have a conversation with on the podcast to share at least one actionable thing I can do and you can do to address those core issues. And in the spirit of taking action, today I want to challenge you to do this. Consider your own purpose. Write out the 10 things you've done in your life that have brought you the most fulfillment. And once you've written down those 10 things, start to compare them and try and find the common threads between them. Please shoot me a text with any thoughts or feedback you have, or just to talk about the challenges you're going through. Thank you so much for listening to my story and what we're going to try and do. Subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and follow on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I am so excited to kick off the Share Your Why podcast.